Let's have a look at number 10, 10A. Try and reduce that glare. Let me do this. <clears throat> 10A. Change in entropy of the system and the surroundings, and therefore total if we add them together. Um, when we have a sample of nitrogen, 14 grams of nitrogen, initially 298 in one bar. And we have three, is it three? Three scenarios. The first, isothermal reversible expansion. The second is an isothermal irreversible expansion. And the third is a reversible adiabatic. The third one's going to be easy because entropy is going to be zero. So let's consider these three and figure out what the delta S for system, surrounding, and total, which is their sum for each of these, would be. So I'll put that up there. And let's um, sketch out, first of all, can you see? Nitrogen and two. <clears throat> Again, I just wish this would stay in focus. There's no trick here. It's going to lower it a bit. Let's see if it's happier when it's a wee bit closer. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it'll stay. Good. I like that. Nitrogen. 14 grams. And the initial temperature is 298K. For pressure, we have a standard pressure, so that's 1.00 bar. And that'll occupy an initial volume. Let's just put it as V1 for the moment. And we have a few different paths. The first is an isothermal reversible expansion. And in the second, it's also isothermal, but in this case, irreversible. And it says that it's expanding against constant P external. Now, even if it didn't say this, oh, hold on. A constant external pressure I have here that it's zero. Let's have a look at the question again. It seems kind of strange. 10, A, isothermal irreversible expansion against P external equals zero. Okay. And the third is a reversible adiabatic. Now, do we know anything about the expanded state? In 310A, it doubles its volume. That's all we know. V2 is V1. Okay. Um, it's isothermal, so I know that the T2 is T1. I didn't mean to put V2 equals V1. It says it doubles. V2 times 2. That looks strange. 2 times V1. How about that? Okay. Um, let's look at the first one here. Isothermal reversible expansion. So I don't know if you're watching these videos in series in in uh, in order, um, but we've done an isothermal reversible expansion in um, probably more than once in the questions that come leading up to number ten. And so I think at this point I'm ready just to say that delta S, and I think you are too, is equal to n. R 
ln of v final over v initial. So I'm just going to scoot that over so we can see everything. Um, I hope everyone's OK with that. OK, and if you're wondering where that came from, maybe you could look back and do these videos in order. I think you'd benefit from that. Um, so I need the molar mass of nitrogen. Nitrogen is 14.0067. Times two, that's 28.0134. 28.0134 grams per mole. So that is equal to my number of moles. I have 14 grams of N2 times one mole of N2 is 28, I could just put 28 grams, I suppose, because my precision is only two sig figs. Sorry about that. Um, R, I'll use the 8.3145 joule per k mole. The rest is unitless because its lawns demonstrate that my units are canceling except for the ones that I want ln of v final over v initial. So v final is, how about we write it like this just to really drive that point home. I don't actually need to know um, the values because these will cancel and it's just a lot of two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the ln of two is 0.693. Multiply that by 8.3145 and then by 14 and divide it by 28.0134 if you like. And I have a value of 2.88 joule per Kelvin for the delta S in this first described path. And because that's a two sig fig value, I'm just going to change this to 2.9. Okay. All right. Small amount of nitrogen, small expansion, not a high temperature, so very small entropy change. Uh, just before we move on to the second path, number two, I'll just remind you that the question is asking you to determine not only delta S for the system, which is what this is, but also for the surroundings. And because this is in number one, uh, path one, an isothermal reversible expansion, specifically reversible, you can write that delta S for the surroundings is equal and opposite, and therefore in this case, a minus 2.9 joule per Kelvin. And finally, the delta S total would be their sum, and that would be zero. Uh, so it, remember that the total has to be um, greater than zero for spontaneous, and this is reversible, so it's kind of kind of like equilibrium condition. And delta S total would be zero in that case. So let's move to number two. Uh, let's slide back and read again. Oops. Um, well, that's okay. It was 2v1. So for the second path, we have an irreversible isothermal expansion, again, to the same uh, doubling effect. But this time, it is irreversible. Let's stop there for a moment. Clearly, when it's irreversible, it's against a constant external pressure, which we normally say, and we would always interpret, unless otherwise advised, that that external pressure is equal to the final uh, pressure of the system. So in this case, it's against an external of zero. How, how, uh, how could that be, do you think? When would a gas work against a zero pressure? When expand, it, in, in a real situation? Wouldn't it be when it's expanding maybe into a previously evacuated space, right? So 
that's one possibility here. Um, but the main question is, what is delta s? And remember, by definition, delta s is, um, I'll just keep the other one in view there, delta s is related to the reversible q. Not only related, but defined as that uh, reversible q over temperature. And so even though this, in the second instance, um, it looks like a different path, I would still calculate delta s based on the reversible change. And so I would be left with using the same formula, nr ln v final over v initial, even for number two, which means that the delta s as a state property independent of the, well, pardon me, that's not the reason why here. It's because it's only dependent on the reversible q. Um, it would still be 2.9 joule per k. So that's my answer for number two, and that's the reasoning why. Delta S for my system, I'm, I have to use the reversible path. And so this one is delta S for the isothermal irreversible is the same as delta S for the isothermal reversible because they are computed using the reversible Q. And our line V final over V initial, the same initial and final states, therefore I have the same delta S. So it's going to be as above 2.9 joule per Kelvin. So then the question becomes, what is delta S for the surroundings? Well, what's unique here is that the delta S for the surrounding in this case is zero because I'm working against a constant external pressure of zero um, in this irreversible uh, description. The delta S for the surroundings is zero. So then what does that make my total? The total is the system plus surrounding. And so clearly it's 2.9 plus zero or 2.9. It's clearly greater than zero. And definitely this second path is spontaneous. In the third instance, I have a reversible adiabatic path. Okay, so bring it back. I'm still going uh, to twice my initial volume, but the path instead of being isothermal is adiabatic. And it is reversible. But it's going to be zero. It's going to be zero all the way through because delta S is zero for the system because it's adiabatic. It's zero for the surroundings because it's reversible, so therefore they're the same. And it's zero for the total because the addition is still zero. Okay, so that's number 10 in a nutshell. You might want to review what was said because not everything is written down.